Welcome to Miss Hell, a place where we dive deep into the dark and twisted world of female true crime. Grab a cup of tea and prepare to be shocked and intrigued by these amazing cases. The magnolia flower represents a love for nature, nobility, perseverance and most importantly, honour. Paired with a branch of an olive tree, it means that in a difficult situation, you have to keep your dignity. I'm certain that for this once, many of us will empathise with the alleged villain of the story. Intrigue, tragedy and a quest for justice, her tale is bittersweet, but her death will leave you with a sour taste. I'll begin by telling you that once upon a time in the heart of Rome lived a young woman named Beatrice Sensi. She was the youngest daughter of a noble and influential family, known for their wealth and power. But behind their opulent facade, a dark and twisted secret lay hidden. Her privileged background did little to shield her from the perils that would soon befall her. She was the youngest of seven children, five sons and two daughters, sired by Count Francesco Cenci and his first wife, who died when Beatrice was four years old. Francesco Cenci was a cruel and abusive man who ruled his family with an iron fist. Known to be a brutal man, he used his inherited wealth to indulge his tastes for depraved violence with impunity, which earned him the hatred of Rome's people. He was known to mistreat and starve his servants. He even confessed to molesting young boys. So, as you can see, he was infamous for his wickedness and sadistic behaviour, often subjecting his wife and children to his violent rages. His merciless ways cast a shadow over the life of his family tainting even the grandest of palaces with a sense of unease and despair. Francesco's immorality often got him in trouble with the authorities. The Count was jailed and fined numerous times for sexual crimes committed against Rome's people, but due to his noble status he was always freed early. While their father was temporarily locked up, Beatrice's elder siblings found ways to escape the abuse. One of Beatrice's brothers, Giacomo, simply disowned his wealthy father and left. Two other brothers got themselves killed in duels, and her elder sister successfully petitioned the Pope for permission to marry without her father's consent. Despite Beatrice's frequent attempts to inform authorities of the horrendous abuse suffered by the family, no action was taken against the Count, although many Romans were well aware of the terrible things going on inside the walls of the castle. It's interesting to note that the Count was never punished for the abuse he inflicted on his family, but only towards the people of Rome. When the Count discovered that Beatrice had reported him, he banished her and his second wife, Lucrezia, along with his youngest son, Bernardo, to live in the family's castle at La Petrella del Salto, in the Abruzzi Mountains northeast of Rome. Beatrice, however, possessed a spirit that could not be broken. Despite her tender age, she was courageous and determined, yearning for freedom from her father's tyranny. She dreamt of a life beyond the cold walls of the Sensi Palace, where joy and love were not mere fantasies but tangible realities. Away from the eyes of the authorities, Count Cenci's perversities increased, and the lives of his daughter and second wife became even more hellish. It is said that Beatrice's father made her scrape scabies from his body, including from off his testicles. The violence and abuse that Beatrice suffered at the hands of her father were unbearable. As fate would have it, the Sensi family's darkest hour was fast approaching. With Beatrice growing older, the situation at home only worsened. Rumours of incestuous relationships between Francesco and his daughter began circulating. In desperation, Beatrice wrote to her elder brother Giacomo, beseeching his aid. The Count found one of Beatrice's letters begging for help and beat his daughter to blood in retaliation. Driven to the brink of madness by years of torture and with equal parts determination and fear, Beatrice devised a plot to liberate herself from the clutches of her monstrous father. With the help of her brothers Giacomo and Bernardo and their stepmother Lucrezia, a plan was conceived to end Francesco's reign of terror. In May 1598, Beatrice and her family conspired to murder Francesco Cenci. They sought the assistance of two men, Marzio and Olimpio, to execute the plan. 
Firstly, the group tried to poison the Count, but that failed. Therefore, on a dark and stormy night, the men attacked Francesco while he was sleeping at his castle in Petrella Salto. After that, they threw his body off a balcony to make it seem accidental. News of the Patriarch's grisly demise spread like wildfire through Rome. The people whispered of a murder most foul, glorifying the actions of the Sensi family. However, the walls of the Sensi Palace could not silence the truth forever, and soon the authorities began sniffing around their doorstep. It was soon discovered the involvement of Beatrice and her family. The papal authorities arrested the culprits, including Olympio, Beatrice's lover and hitman, and tossed them all in jail. The other hitman, Marzio, fled into the mountains but was tracked down and killed by one of Count Senchi's relatives to avoid the risk of the truth coming out. There was little compassion or understanding for the Senchi family's plight. The law saw them as criminals whose actions could not be condoned and justice would be swift and merciless. Beatrice's lover was tortured to death without revealing the truth. The people of Rome, who knew what kind of man Francesco Cenci had been, figured he deserved his fate, and sympathised with Beatrice and her conspirators. However, Pope Clement VIII, ruler of Rome and the Papal States where the crime had taken place, had other ideas. Allegedly being worried that leniency might encourage other children to murder their parents, the Pope authorised the torture of the accused. They were arrested and put on trial for the crime of patricide. Despite their pleas for mercy and the public sympathy towards the abuse they endured, the powerful and corrupt Kensi family had many enemies who wanted to see them punished. In this tumultuous trial that captured the nation's attention, Beatrice, her mother and her brother Giacomo were found guilty of murder and condemned to death. As she stood before the court, her voice defiant, Beatrice refused to cower in fear. She clung to the undying hope that her tale of oppression and suffering would awaken the hearts of those who deemed her guilty. But the wheels of justice turned cold and unyielding. The Sensi family was to pay the ultimate price for their crime, as their executions were scheduled one by one. At dawn on the 11th of September 1599, they were taken to Sant'Angelo Bridge. In the cart to the scaffold, Giacomo was subjected to continual torture. On reaching the scaffold, his head was smashed with a mallet. His corpse was then quartered. The public spectacle continued with the executions of Lucrezia and then Beatrice. Each took her turn on the block to be beheaded with a small axe. Only the 12-year-old Bernardo was spared, but he was led to the scaffold and forced to witness the execution of his relatives before returning to prison and having his properties confiscated to be given to the Pope's own family. It was decreed that Bernardo should then become a galley slave for the remainder of his life. However, he was released a year later, saved by the people of Rome. According to the chronicles of the time, the Pope was surprised and even appalled to hear that Beatrice's body brought that night to the church of San Pietro in Montorio had been followed by a great crowd of people who didn't sing nor prayed but wept in silence. For weeks and months, flowers brought by everyone in Rome covered her grave. Some theories suggest that Beatrice's death may have had the involvement of the church. The Sensi family had a problematic relationship with the Catholic Church, which led to potential conflicts. According to this theory, the church could have played a role in her death to teach the defiant family a lesson, or punish Beatrice for her alleged sins. Other theorists believe that Beatrice Sensi was completely innocent of the crime and was unjustly accused and convicted. They argue that there is limited evidence connecting her to the murder and she might have been framed by someone with vested interests. This theory suggests that the trial not only failed to uncover the true culprits but also concealed crucial evidence that could have proved Beatrice's innocence. According to at least one account, the two executioners who had carried out the death sentences died within a month of her death, one by suicide, the other by murder. I believe that the most reliable theory is that the Pope's judgment was clouded by his greed when he sentenced the whole Sensi lineage to death. He promptly confiscated all their wealth for himself and gifted one of the castles to his son. This practice wasn't uncommon back then either. 
Today, Beatrice Tensi's story continues to inspire and captivate the imagination of artists and writers, serving as a reminder of the timeless struggle for justice against tyranny. It is related that every year on the night before the anniversary of her death, she comes back to the Sant'Angelo Bridge where she was executed, carrying her severed head. If you enjoyed this dive into the macabre, make sure to like, share and subscribe for more intriguing stories from the depths of the human experience.